So here I am back in Revit 2016. I have the Gusset Plate family open. If you remember from the last module, we focused in on creating the skeleton system, the dimensional parameters that control the flexing of that skeleton system, and the physical geometry. Let's go ahead and create material parameters for this gusset plate. Now there are two ways we can approach applying material parameters. One is to go to the family types command that we should be used to by now. Select it and it, within the family types window, create a new material parameter. So I'll click new parameter and you'll notice you have family parameter, shared parameter, the naming convention, a type or instance we've, which we've already discussed prior, and discipline type of parameter and group parameter under. I'll go ahead and give this a particular name. And within the discipline, I'll leave it as common. The reason we want to leave this as common is because under type of parameter, as we select it, there are different types of generic parameters to work with, and we have material here. If, however, we go into the discipline and change it to, say, structural, the type of parameter list now changes and gives us more structural-based types of parameters. Since this is a very generic gusset plate, even though it's used for structural stiffening, the material parameter still resides under common. I'll go ahead and click Material, and Group Parameter Under defaults to Material and Finishes. This portion here, what that defines is where the dimension will sit within the Family Types window. So for example, you'll see Thickness and Width are parameters that we created earlier, and they're grouped under Dimensions. So if I were to click OK, I now have a gusset plate material parameter and it's specified by category. What does it mean when it says by category? What this means is that as the family is used in a project environment, the end user can select that family, go into its type properties, which is actually over here under edit type within the project environment, and they can click inside this cell and it will actually open up the material dialog box. When the material dialog box opens up, they can go through the process of applying any material that they want, either from the materials that are defined either within the family or in that current project, or they can actually pull from the Autodesk library of materials. I'm going to leave this in this particular manner, hit apply and hit OK. Now that we've created the material parameter, we have to physically assign it to the object so the object knows it has a material parameter. If I select the gusset plate family and go over to the pro instance properties again, you'll see materials and finishes is available. I can click either inside here where it says by category and force it to be a particular material. Let's say for example, a unique type of material. Say we have Autodesk materials and we have AEC materials. For those who are not aware, Autodesk materials are the generic materials that are created to be used in any type of application whereas AEC materials are meant more for the architects, engineering, and construction industry specific disciplines. For example, if I head over to metals, you'll see that in the materials dialog box, this library will list all the different types of materials for steel, uh, for metal. So let's pick a type of material, say silver, and I'll click this icon to add it to the current project, and in this case, the current family. We'll scroll down and look for silver, select it, and 
all of the data that concerns that particular material silver is defined here. I'll do another course on materials in Revit. So don't worry if you don't get a chance to know and learn about all of these features. So if I do this, <clears throat> what's actually happening is I'm physically assigning a material called silver to this physical geometry. And if it is to be used in a project, it will always be tagged as silver as a default. If the end user needs to use it and wants to change the material from silver to another material, he will have to actually open up the family and ch make the change here. There's a distinction between how I created a material parameter <clears throat> within the family types window here versus assigning it here. Since we created it in the family types window here, and we want to specify leaving this as by category and allowing any end user to apply any material to it within the project environment, not the family editor environment, we would not select the family and assign the material here. There is another box right here called associate family parameter. If I click this, it allows me to take this material instance parameter that's defined for this object and associate it to the gusset plate material parameter that we created earlier. So if I click OK, now this cell becomes gray. The box has an equal symbol inside and it knows to use this cell here for the definition of the type of material to be used. I click OK, and the material has been, parameter has been assigned to that material. We haven't physically said you are silver or titanium or copper or some other material. We've just assigned the physical geometry to say you do have a material parameter and it will be changed based upon the user's input. There is a second method that I said earlier that we can do to create a material parameter for this gusset plate. And it's actually the reverse of what we just did. So let's say, for example, I'm going to undo everything that I've done. And we're back to square one. I can select the physical geometry. And under the materials instance parameter, click this cell. And we, you notice we do not have any parameters to associate it with. We can just go ahead and click Add Parameter at that point. And it will default to Family Parameter. It will default to Common. It will default to Material Type. And it will default to Materials and Finishes. So in here I can put in Gusset Plate Material. Click OK. And then OK. And now I have that object as assigned a material parameter that's associated within the family types window. So the second method that I showed is actually a little bit faster than the first method. The first method is a little bit more careful, if you will. So that is how we go ahead and create a material parameter that's assigned to the object. Now let's take a look at the visibility control settings of this gusset plate. And what I mean by that is there will be instances where you want to show or not show the object or parts of the object as visible within the project environment when it comes to a level of detail, coarse, medium, or fine, or within a particular view, for example, floor plan view, elevation view, 3D view, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and approach how we create visibility parameters for this object. Let's say I select this object. 
you'll notice in the Modify Extrusion Contextual tab of the ribbon, you'll see Mode Panel and Visibility Settings. If I click Visibility Settings, it will show a window called Family Element Visibility Settings. In here, it specifies that this object can be seen in Plan, RCP, in front, back, left, and right, and as well when cut. It also can be seen in different levels of detail, for example, coarse, medium, or fine. So the default is it can be seen in all views and all levels of detail. What if you don't want to see it in coarse or medium? You only want to see it in fine. Well, then all you need to do is uncheck coarse or medium. And let's say you only want to see it in plan view. So if I uncheck front, left, back, right, and leave when cut in RCP and plan, click OK, what ends up happening is that as I use it within the project environment, it will only be visible in those types of situations. If you were very careful, you watched, you'll see that the object actually went slightly gray. That is your visual indicator to let you know that a visibility setting has been altered. Again, like we learned in previous modules, in the visual control toolbar down here, there is an icon for preview visibility. If I click it to turn it on, I can see that the object disappears. Why does the object disappear in the 3D view? because when I selected the object and I said, I only want to see it in plan and only in a fine level of detail, you will not see it in 3D. So if I head back to the reference level floor plan view and zoom in, you'll notice that it is visible. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this visibility setting on and switch this to fine. Now it's visible. Again, if I even switch to, say, shaded so you can see the object a little easier, remember we said that the object is only going to be visible in a plan view, plan cut view, and in fine level of detail. So I'm still in the plan view. If I switch this to medium or coarse, it should disappear. And that's correct. That's what it's doing. So remember, this feature here, Preview Visibility, is only available in Revit 2016 R2. So if, it's, if this icon is missing within your Revit interface, just double check to make sure you have the latest uh, version of Revit installed. The easiest way is to go to the little black arrow to the right of the question mark help symbol in the upper right corner of the information toolbar. Select it. Go to About, Revit, and you'll see what build you're running and what update release you have for what release R1 or R2. So as you can see, I have the latest update 3 for R2, and therefore I have that feature. So if I turn off this preview visibility, it goes back to the normal state of working. Lastly, now that we've created a material parameter and visibility setting controls, we need to actually test it in the project environment. So I'll go up here to the um, quick access toolbar, click new to create a new project. And I'll use the control tab to switch back to the family and I'll load it into the project. And then I'll just place an instance. Now, if I switch this to fine, <clears throat> and I still don't see it, we want to look at the discipline. It's set to architectural. Let's switch it to coordination. If you still don't see it, you can open up the visibility graphics dialog box. If you go to the view tab of the ribbon and go to the graphics panel and click visibility graphics, you can open up this dialog box. You can also type in the keyboard shortcut VV or VG. Let's filter by structural. And let's go ahead and select everything and turn everything on. Now, if we don't see it, 
then there has to be a different situation going on. For example, the view range may be set incorrectly or there's some other feature that's preventing it from being seen. So let's just go ahead and look at it from a 3D perspective and see if we see it. Now, if we still don't see it, then the possible solution is the starting template file that we used has some controls and visibility settings that's preventing this. If you noticed, I used the architectural template file as my starting point. Let's try using the structural template file as my starting point. Again, using control tab to switch back to the family and clicking load into project. I'll place it and select modify and then switch this to fine. Now you can see the object. I'll zoom in very carefully. It's a small object. Let's look at it in 3D and see if we can see it. We can't see it in 3D. Even if we switch to fine, oh, now we can, good. So let's switch this to shaded and so we can see it. So let's test that visibility parameter and also test the material. I'll select the object and you'll see under type properties, gusset plate material. I can click inside here for by category and it opens up the material dialog box. Again, these are all the materials that are in the current Revit project. Let's go ahead and pick a material. How about plywood? Hit OK. Hit OK. And now we can see that material has been assigned to the object. How do we test the visibility settings? Again, if we head back to the plan view and zoom in to the object, We'll go ahead and use SD as the keyboard shortcut for changing the visual style to shaded. If I switch this to coarse or medium, the object should disappear. And it does. If I switch to medium, it still holds. If I switch to fine, I'm back. So as you can see, we've created the family properly with the material and the visibility settings parameters in place.